In this video, we're going to explore how to create a web service with SOAP and Eclipse, Tomcat, and Apache Axis. Now, what is a web service? A web service is a way that we can have true distributed computing by having information provided by one, say, server, and then consumed by a variety of other applications. Now, this concept is nothing new. We had, in the 90s, we had things like uh, CORBA, the Common Object Request Broker Architecture, which was used for uh, creating remote procedure calls from one application to another. The nice thing is these applications did not have to be written in the same programming language. CORBA offered us a way to wire up programs that were written maybe in C++, and Perl, and Java, and have them wired together. It was a bit complex, though. You had to define an interface definition language and several other things. So within the world of Microsoft, they had COM, the, the uh, COM and DCOM, to talk from Microsoft languages to each other. Within Java, we had RMI, Remote Method Invocation. Web services came about and gave us kind of a, a new way to use XML to talk between programs. So we have SOAP. Simple Object Application Protocol, which is the standard that we use to talk between applications, and then WSDL, the Web Services Definition Language, that describes what is available remotely. So for instance, it says, here's a class, and here's a method that you can call on that class, and here are the parameters that you can pass into that method. So WSDL describes that in a kind of a, a language-neutral form. And then UDDI, Universal Directory Interface, and forgive me, I forgot what the other D stands for, uh, that's a way that we can look up web services. One really nice thing about web services is that there are several that are available to us. And I often say that the value of a, uh, an application is really uh, how it combines data to come up with information. So if we take a, something like, uh, take a look at something like programmable web APIs and then directory, this will give us a list of web services that are available for us to consume. So a lot of things that you might commonly think of, Google Maps, Twitter, YouTube, all that. There are some that are uh, generally uh, frequently used, things like an IP address lookup. So a geo IP, so you can take an IP address and you can get a rough approximation of where that user is coming from, uh, maybe down to a city level, not to an address level. A stock quote service, weather services, these are things that are commonly available as uh, web services. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our plants available via a web service. I'm going to start in the UI layer. And by the way, you might notice we've already done some JSON services earlier. And I will say that uh, SOAP, was po SOAP was popular for about the last 15 years. It is a bit of a heavy protocol. Uh, it's, a, it's easy to use, but it is a bit of a heavy protocol. And so now we see that JSON a lot of times is a, is a popular alternative. But nonetheless, uh, we're going to go ahead and go into our UI layer. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new. And then it's just going to be a plain old class. So we're going to say new class. And I'm going to say plant WS service and finish. I need to annotate this with a few things. I'm going to say at and then web service. And then I might make a method called uh, public string fetch plants string plant name and uh, open curly close curly. And we're going to annotate this with at web method. Okay. Uh, return, we'll just say return foo for the moment. And save. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to uh, I'm also going to extract an interface from this. So we'll say refactor. And then I'm going to say extract interface. And we'll simply call it I uh, we'll add I plant. WS service. Okay, uh, go ahead and declare the fetch plants and choose OK. And then in the iPlants WS service, I'll go ahead and annotate that with that web service again uh, as well. Okay. 
And the fetch plants method, we'll add at web method. And control shift R, organize imports. Whoops. Uh, control shift O, rather. Organize imports and save. Now let's go to plant WS service. Right click and say new and other. And I'm going to type in web. And we're going to see web service. And I'm going to choose next. And bottom up Java Bean web service, that looks good. I'll say publish the web service and monitor the web service. And I'm going to say next. Okay. Uh, plants, plant WS service WSDL, that looks good to me. See if we have any other options. No, that looks good. We're going to expose the fetch plants method. And I'll choose next. And we'll give it a moment. And we'll go ahead and publish and finish. Okay, now let's take a look at our web XML. I go to web content and web INF and take a look. It created a new folder for us here called uh, plant WS service WSDL. So it's created uh, some new information and you see that plant WS web service it has input fetch plants and then output fetch plants response. So it's done a little graphics here to explain to us what it has done. Uh, Web INF plant WS service service. I guess I didn't need to call it service, did I? Uh, resources, we're looking good there. Images, yeah, we're fine there. Uh, let's look at the Web XML. Okay, so this is the file that describes our website. And I'm, once it opens up here, I'm going to scroll down towards the bottom and take a look at what it's done. Uh, it has given us some new servlet mappings here. Uh, it has something called uh, Access Servlet and it has a new URL plot pattern called Services. So let's see what happens when we open up our browser and I'm going to go to localhost 8080 plant places. Now I'm going to add in Services and then I'm going to say Plant WS Service and let's see what we get. We get a little confirmation page that our plant WS service has been published. Now I'm going to add a uh, question mark WSDL and take a look. This is that web services definition language that's generated for us. What it's saying is, okay, I'm exposing something called plant WS service. I'm exposing a method on that called fetch plants. It's going to consume, or it's going to accept a, a fetch plants request and produce a fetch plants response. And then up here, it gives us a little more information on what the request and the response looks like. So we've created the service, and this obviously doesn't look very this doesn't look very interesting to us, right? Because uh, gosh, we, we can't really read this, but don't worry, there's an easy way that we can test it out to make sure it works. Let's go ahead and copy this WSDL URL. And now let's go back into Eclipse. And in the quick access box, I'm going to type in web service. I'll start typing until I see launch the web services explorer. I'm going to click on the web services explorer and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to WSDL main. Now, honestly, the easiest way, I'm just going to hit this WSDL page icon. I had tested this out uh, earlier, so the URL is already there. Pretend it's not. I'm going to go ahead and paste our URL, and I'm going to choose Go. What this is going to do is it's going to inspect that WSDL URL. It's going to see that the fetch plants method is available to us. Okay. So I'm going to click on fetch plants. Now remember what fetch plants looks like. That's a method that accepts a string and returns a string. So I'm just going to put in any old string because it's just going to return to us foo regardless of what I put in. So I put in bar and I choose go. And now let's take a look down below and you see that it's returning the string called foo. Now, naturally, we probably want to add a little bit more to this so that it is actually doing a search based on whatever name we put in. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But nonetheless, using this Web Services Explorer, we can confirm that our application works. So now let's go ahead and, and, and query from our database 
And once again, we're going to borrow a lot of things that we've developed earlier. And this, again, adds validation to our approach of separating our application into layers, DAO, DTO, service, and UI, because we're leveraging the service and the DAO classes that we've already made. Now, if we take a look at our service right now, uh, our Plant WS service, there's not much to it. We're just returning foo. But we've already done a lot of this work in a previous video and something called Plant JSON Servlet. And in that one, what we're doing is we're uh, searching against the plant service, the plant service, the business logic uh, class that we've already made for a list of plants that match a certain search term. So let me borrow a little bit of this. I'm going to just go ahead and grab a few lines here and copy. And I'm going to put them in our plant WS service. And I'm going to control M so we can see this in high definition. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to say I, I'm going to change this around a little bit. I'm going to say string return value equals foo, and then return return value. That's going to make things a little bit easier because what we return is going to vary. Now I'm going to paste what I borrowed from our um, JSON service. Now we have this thing here called get plant service. We also are creating a plant which is going to hold our search criteria. Our search criteria is in this variable called plant name. So let me change that from E to plant name. Now what am I going to do about this get plant service? Well that's easy. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to declare an attribute, iPlantService, and remember that's our business logic class that eventually is going to reach into the database and query the database for a plant that matches this plant name. So iPlantService, plant service, and then we're going to put the uh, at inject parameter, and also I'm going to add the at named parameter to this class, control shift o organize imports. Okay, now for plant service, control one, and let's create a getter and a setter, and make sure that they're public. Uh, everything looks good and okay. And we're getting a little bit closer. Now, I do need to do one thing. I do kind of have to coax Spring into doing dependency injection for me. I have to let it know that I want automatic dependency injection. So I need to add a constructor with this line right here, Spring, Spring Bean Auto Wiring Support. Now remember what a constructor is. It's typically public, but it doesn't have to be. And then the name of the class itself. And then uh, we'll do a default constructor, so no parameters. But notice no return type. That's the important part. That's what makes it a constructor. And paste. Okay, and I honestly, I just found that from a web search, but of course, you'll be able to pick this up by uh, taking a look at our Git repository. So I save, and a couple more things I want to do. I'm getting back a list of plants, and ideally we want to return that list of plants, but let's just test our theory so far. Let's test out what we have so far. Uh, let me make this default return value. I'll copy that up here, and we'll just call this a default value in case no plants match. Okay, return value, I'm going to say no plants match your search. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over the results and just pick the last one and return it. Okay, we know in Eclipse we can use a little shortcut for E, control space. That will give us a for each loop that will iterate over um, a collection. It usually looks for a local collection, something like that. And it's going to iterate over the collection called plants. Each time it loops, it's going to put the current plant in this variable called plant. So I'm going to say a return value equals plant. Dot two string. Now the way this works, whatever the last plant is, that's what's going to get returned. Uh, as I said, simple. Uh, we really should return the entire list, but right now all we're doing is a simple proof of concept. So I save, and then I'm going to pause the video as I redeploy, reload, 
and we're going to see if it works. And at this point, the application has redeployed. I'm going to type in the word red and choose go. And I've set a breakpoint so that we can take a look. And I'm going to step over. Now, remember that this plant service is calling against our live Hibernate implementation against our SQLite database, or I'm sorry, uh, our MySQL database. And uh, just a moment, I'll pull that up. And so you see the plants table is what it's going to go against. So we have uh, Potomac Pawpaw, Autumn Blaze Mabel, Chinese Redbud, and then I misspelled Redbud a few times, White Oak, and Tulip Tree, some of the options that we have. So let me, uh, it's going to be running against this database. And what you're going to see here is that our service layer is going to call that DAO layer, which is going to call the database. You'll see a few log statements come out down below here as it does that fetch. Now, if you're just joining this video and you haven't seen the video where I make the service layer and the DAO, I do make those in a previous video in this full stack enterprise web development uh, playlist. So I can point you to those videos if that's of interest. Uh, nonetheless, you see it's gotten several results and so I'm going to go ahead and press play, let it play through. I'm going to go back to Java EE view, click on the Web Services Explorer, and let's take a look at what result we got for red. The last one we got was the Pleasant Ridge Red Oak. Okay, looks good to me. We're getting back live data. What if I put in Potomac? Let's try Potomac this time and see what results we get. So I'm going to put in Potomac. Whoops, and spell it right, and go. And we'll quickly tell it, yeah, we've seen this, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, disable the breakpoint and play through so we don't have to go through that again. And back to the web service interface, and let's see what we get. For the fetch plants response, we get Assemina Triloba Potomac Pawpaw. Now, what if I just put in some gibberish? Okay, remember, I took the breakpoint off now. Uh, so fetch plants response, no plants match your search. Okay, uh, what, let's try one more. Uh, let's try, let's see, white oak. How about that? Or tulip tree. I kind of like the tulip tree. Let's try tulip and go. Okay, fetch plants response. Liriodendron, tulipiferia, tulip tree. So this Web Services Explorer, uh, looks like that popped out. Let me get that back in. The Web Services Explorer is, is an easy, is kind of like a built-in client that we can use to test this. Our job in developing this web service is just making the information available. Um, somebody else can write a client that's going to consume this, or we could do that as well. But our focus right now is just writing this service. In our next video, we will create a simple client that will consume this service. So if you're interested to see how it happens on the other end, stay tuned for that next video. So that'll wrap us up for this video in creating a web service with uh, Eclipse, Tomcat, Apache Access, and Spring Dependency Injection. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.